Is the Mazda Miata more aerodynamic than a boat? The Miata is often called a boat, but is it? As the boat sails along, the water ripples, while for the Miata, there are no ripples from the water. Looking from side on, the blue is the water and the red is the air. The bulb at the front pushes the water up, which actually helps reduce its wave drag. Then at the rear, the wake jumps up a little before settling back down. The Miata doesn't have a bulb, and in fact, its nose is quite pointed, which is great for its aerodynamics because it divides the flow quite well. That is accompanied by some unwanted high pressure still, but not nearly as much as many other cars out there, for example, the Land Cruiser VXR here. As the air flows under the car, there is a little separation, but it's not that bad, which is partly because of that sharp front dividing the air cleanly and directing much of it up. The flow underneath is very well behaved, kind of like the boat, but there is no diffuser really, so the flow doesn't kick up as much and no additional downforce is really produced. The boat's diffuser is quite weird for a car, but it does kick the water up, which helps push the rear down. Over the hood, the floor is really nice. Mazda did a great job here curving the hood, so the flow still stays attached, but it doesn't accelerate too much. As a result, the low pressure zone we often get here is kept relatively low, and the curved hood also allows a better blending with the windshield. We do still get some high pressure here, which pushes the car back with the might of many horses, but the Miata has many horses under the hood to overcome these horses. And this kind of convertible isn't great because you can see how low the rear is. That means that as the flow gets jettisoned over the cabin, there is nothing to attach to later on. That creates an even bigger wake than necessary, and it also means that there's no protection from gusts of wind for the jollies inside driving along. One potential benefit of having such a low rear is that you end up with quite a small rear face to the car and hence wake. So the drag is reduced there, but it would probably be much better if they had raised up the rear like they do with the Porsche Targa, for example. I'm quite impressed with how high the pressure is in the wake though. It is low pressure, but there is much lower pressure coming off the top of the windshield than in the wake, which is an impressive feat. That wake from the windshield is also very unsteady, which will cause buffeting on the passengers and reduce their ride comfort. And given how low the pressure is inside the cabin, it means that there is this natural suction pulling outside objects into the car and into the people. If we look at the velocities of the water and air over the boat, we don't get nearly as much unsteadiness over the top where the people would be. So it is possible that the ride quality is better for the boat. And the wake is minimal. I'm really impressed. This non-car diffuser is working very well. This boat is actually a standard open foam tutorial. And if you're interested in learning open foam, then check out our courses here. Looking at the Miata from above, the flow around the car is super impressive. First, there isn't much of a wake around the sides, which is not always the case. Often sharp edges make the flow blow out, but not for the Miata. Then around the rear, look at how well it just flows around and creates a really small wake. The wake from the mirrors are angled in, which is better for drag reduction, but it also means that it is angled into the cabin a little more. But in the cabin, we see that fortunately, the flow is slow, so at least the people in there won't get blown around too much. I guess it also depends on whether they've been fighting recently, or if everything is smoothed over by now. This top view confirms that there is low pressure inside the cabin, sucking things into your face. Now, the drag orbit shows that remarkably, most of the drag from the Miata is coming from the windshield and the cabin. That is completely different to non-convertible cars, like the J40, where most of the drag comes from the wake. That is partly because the Miata has such a small rear face, I mean, just look at how little there is. The front wheels are also massive drag producers and create far more than the rear wheels. I forgot to make the drag orbit for the boat, but I assume it's very good. So we can conclude that the Miata isn't very much like a boat because it doesn't have any ripples from the water or a thing that pokes out of the front or a thing that pokes out of the back, but it does have sleek sides and a drag friendly rear, but a very draggy cabin. And the boat also doesn't produce any drag from its wheels. So with all of that, what does the Miata's drag coefficient come out to be then? It comes in at 0.43, and it produces positive lift, making 9.53 kilos. And if you're staying on YouTube, YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so check it out. Peace out, amigos.